The Yankees are in town. They're in last place. The Red Sox, of course, in second place at 12 and 10. I'm Jason Mastronato with Steve Buckley. Hey. We have our first taste of the rivalry this year. Uh, Buck, is this rivalry alive for you, or is it on life support? Uh, well, it's not dead, but it's, it's certainly dormant to the degree that it doesn't have the great personalities that it had way back in the day. Uh, y you don't have the Jason Veritek, A-Rod thing. You have A-Rod, but he's, he's a shell of his former self. Uh, both teams kind of have to be good for the rivalry to have real juice to it, which it had certainly in 99, 03, and 04 when they played in the ALCS. And as I wrote in the Herald today, what this rivalry needs is it needs villains and heroes, and they don't have them right now. Yeah, well, we talked to Xander uh, Bogarts today, and Bogarts said, you know, one play could change that. Yep. I mean, and he's right. One bad play could change, turn this whole thing around. So that'll be something interesting to watch. I don't think the Yankees are very good. I think that's one of the reasons. I mean, they're the only team that didn't make a single move this winter, not one free agent signing. Um, they made a couple trades. Well, they got Chapman. That's, they made that's, a couple trades. Yeah. They got Chapman. They got Castro. But now one signing. They're in last place. They have a worse pitching staff than the Red Sox. Uh, do you think later this year, is this are these games even going to matter? Well, I mean, you make a valid point. And unless the Yankees step up and the Red Sox continue to play halfway well, uh, again, if it's two bottom of the division teams, as it kind of has been the last few years, I mean, uh, one of the great Yankee Red Sox moments, I and mean, you got you got John Farrell challenging Michael Pineda on the Pine Tower a couple years ago. Uh, Derek Jeter played his final game here at Fenway, uh, which was not really a Red Sox Yankees moment; it was a Yankees moment. So unless unless the two teams are playing well. And unless there's something on the line, unless something like what you pointed out with Xander Bogarts happens, it'll just be the Minnesota Twins coming to town. I hate to say that, yeah. but it's where we're at right now. Well, the Red Sox are going to have to be in it, as you say, and I think they might be. Um, I'm not buying into this recent hot streak that they're on because they were playing an Astros team that is not playing good right now. And a AAA Atlanta uh, and team. And that Braves yeah. team was really bad. Um, the Yankees aren't a great measuring stick either. But are you buying that this Red Sox team could be a contending team? They don't hit home runs, they steal bases. Is this a team that you like? Well, I'm buying that it can be a contending team to the degree that there's wild cards and they're going to be within striking distance. I, I don't know if I see them fading in June as they did the last couple of years and they start selling off players in July. But is it a contending team where it's going to like win the division and go deep into the October uh, playoffs? No. Uh, they, they still have all kinds of problems with the starting rotation. Uh, I'm not worried about David Price. Certainly worried about Buckholtz. I hope Rosello can keep it going. But uh, they, they and, and Stephen Wright remains a riddle to me. I'm not ready to rubber stamp greatness or even a Tim Wakefield 17-win season for him yet. But, but he's useful. Oh, certainly he's useful. useful. Oh, yeah. Useful. I mean, but you need more than useful. You need top-of-the-rotation guys. Right. And I don't know that they have two two top-of-the-rotation guys right now, and I still say that if they end up with two top-of-the-rotation guys, it'll be David Price and Priscilla. But that'll be something to keep an eye on. Uh, we'll have you covered from Fenway Park all weekend with the Yankees in, in town. Uh, thanks so much for reading the Herald, and thanks for watching.